If you love music and you like to build things, odds are that when you're out in your shop building stuff, you want to be rocking out. I'm the same way when I'm working here in the wood shop, I've got to have some tunes going. And that's why in a recent video, I built this using some old car audio gear. The main source here is a double din head unit and we have a set of six and a half inch speakers along with component tweeters. And since I do a lot of testing here on the channel, I actually made these plates so that I could remove them and swap speakers in and out. For power, I use this 10 amp AC to DC power brick and this little system can definitely jam and fill the whole shop with sound but there is one problem. That static noise you hear is because I'm currently playing pink noise on the system, and you can see I have plenty of mids and highs, but not a whole lot of bass. In fact, I think this is the main issue for most shop sound systems, the lack of the subwoofer. I happen to have this used JL Audio 10 TW3 from a previous project, and I think it's gonna be a perfect add-on to match up with the rest of this system and give us that bass that we desperately need. So obviously I wanna build a subwoofer enclosure for this. The next question became, where should I put that subwoofer enclosure? Obviously I use this area here for all of my routers. This worked out perfectly for the speakers because it's just kinda of tucked into the corner there, but there's not enough room to really add a subwoofer box here as well. And I like to use the rest of my counter space here for actually working on projects. So that got me to thinking this space here, I don't really use this drawer very often. It just tends to collect junk. So I got rid of all that junk and I think we have a nice little spot right here that we can put that sub box. And we have another challenge. When we're installing a subwoofer, how do we power that subwoofer? Another issue, how can we isolate the subwoofer enclosure from the rest of the shop? I know it's probably gonna vibrate some things in the shop, but I wanna try to minimize that vibration. How can we do that? Finally, I know I wanna to try to get a fair amount of output out of the subwoofer, so we're gonna do a ported enclosure. What does the build process for that look like? We're gonna get started with the build in just a second here, but really quick, I wanna tell you about our monthly channel sponsor, Crutchfield. Crutchfield is my go-to source for purchasing car audio gear. In fact, I've been using them for many, many years before I even started the YouTube channel. What I really love about their website, and I preach this all the time, is their vehicle selector tool. You can enter the year, make, and model of your vehicle, and you can see what head units and speakers and other gear is compatible with your exact vehicle. For example, I'm about to do a full build on a Volkswagen Jetta, and one of the things that I needed for part of that build was this aftermarket head unit, and as part of Crutchfield's website and their research, I was able to determine exactly what fit kit I needed, exactly what wire harness was needed, what speaker size was needed and what other accessories are compatible, tons of valuable information on their site. To learn more and see a special offer for CAF fans, you can check out the link down in the video description or here on screen. Before I can start building my subwoofer enclosure, I need a solid plan. Whatever space you plan on using, you wanna measure the width, you wanna measure the depth, and you of course wanna measure the height. In my case, for this spot, I need to remove those drawer slides. I'm gonna take those measurements and jot them down. Every subwoofer is a little bit different, so we wanna make sure that we have a custom enclosure that is designed for the exact specs of this sub. I ended up designing this ported enclosure. This is 1.25 cubic feet tuned to 32 hertz with a slot port. If you guys need help with an enclosure blueprint design like this for your application that gives you the dimensions for every single board, I'd love to help. You can learn more at my website, caraudiofabrication.com. Now that I've got all these dimensions and a good plan, it's time to cut some wood at the table saw.
Check it out guys, we've got all of the initial boards cut out. I like to make sure that I label everything. That way I know that each piece is the right piece as I'm going through and putting everything together. Before we can start the assembly though, I need to do the detail work for making these cutout holes for obviously the subwoofer, but also for the port. The first thing I'm doing here is marking out two center lines, one that's vertical and one horizontal to find the exact center of the circle. Here's a cool little trick for you for drawing a perfect circle. Take an old piece of cardboard and poke a hole in it and then measure the radius of the cutout hole and then in the other end you're going to push one push pin in and then use a pencil to scribe that circle. Next I'm marking the cutout for the porthole size and another cool little trick that you can do is rather than measuring out the three quarter inch spacing from the edge of the board you know that your wood thickness is three quarters of an inch or whatever that thickness happens to be for the outsides of the box and you can just use pieces of wood like this to draw that offset. The port width itself though does need to be measured out, so I measure that out and draw that line too. If we look, we can see that I've got the small cutout for the subwoofer, and then I also have a slightly larger circle cutout now marked for the outside flush mount around the sub. Now that I've laid everything out, we can move on to doing the cutting. Now we could just use a jigsaw and take our time to carefully cut this circle as well as this rectangle for the port, but using a jigsaw by hand like that can lead to a slight amount of error. So we're gonna be using a template along with some straight edges here with the flush trim bit over on the router. So in order to do that, the first thing I'm going to do is rough cut using the jigsaw. And by rough cut, I mean I'm going to actually save a little bit of material. The reason for saving a little bit of material like that is it gives some material for the router bit to actually remove. So right now I'm sticking the template on using double-sided template tape and then here over at the router the top bearing rides against that template and then cuts what's down below. This really gives us a nice perfect cut and finish. Now you can see that I'm removing these templates from the boards and getting rid of that template tape and now I can turn my attention to cutting out the rectangle for the port. In this case I'm using some straight edge templates but you could also use some old pieces of of wood that have a straight edge as well. I want to make sure that the port cutout for each of these pieces is perfectly flush so I'm sticking them together and using the one that I just cut to transfer that shape to the next. Now that we've made the cutting passes on the router you can really see the precision that that tool gives us on the subwoofer cutout here as well as the port. I can't wait. I gotta see how that subwoofer looks. There it is. I like it. So these edges around the subwoofer and around the outside of the box and around the port, they're a hard 90 degree corner right now. I do wanna soften those up, so I'm going to use a roundover bit. I'm just going to focus on these inside edges for right now. I'll do the outside edges once the enclosure is completely finished because I'm gonna round all of the corners over. If you look at the top view of the box here, you can see on the port walls, that those corners are rounded over as well. So I'm gonna do the round overs on those pieces right now while we have that bit loaded too. Got that round over added around the subwoofer. I did do a little bit something different here at the port. I intentionally raised the bit a little bit more out of the table so deeper into the wood and you can see that it left this groove I did this intentionally because I wanna paint the port with a black spray paint that will still stay relatively smooth. Once that paint is dry, I can put painter's tape over this and I can use this edge to create a perfect transition cutting away the outside part of the tape, which will then leave this outside part of the wood exposed so that I can then do this roll-on style of paint to protect the rest of the enclosure. So all the detail work is done on this bad boy, we can move on to assembly. I don't wanna to spend too much time talking about the assembly because things are pretty self-explanatory here, so I'll just give you the quick rundown of important tips. First off, you wanna make sure that you're using a good wood glue. In this case, I'm using Tight Bond 2 because the wood glue is what's actually adding the strength to the joint. It's always nice to have clamps on hand, and for my application, I'm using brad nails to secure everything together, and that's because this subwoofer enclosure isn't gonna have anything more than 500 watts. For higher power enclosures, you may want to consider using screws. Also, for ported enclosures like this one, I usually like to assemble the port outside of the box as much as possible, and then I'll add it in later. We are making progress here. We've got the bottom and the two sides on along with the back and we've also got our port assembly created. Now something that I wanna do because this port is a little bit more on the tight side because this is a smaller enclosure, I wanted to paint inside the port here, but I know it's going to be hard to get all the paint in there once this is in its final assembly stage. So instead, what I'm gonna do before I attach this, I'm gonna paint this part of the port here, because technically you can see in. I'm gonna paint this part of the port. I'm gonna paint the bottom and the back, but don't forget, I also need to paint the top inside as well. So I'm gonna do that really quick off camera. 
While that paint was drying, I attached the two baffle pieces together, and again, you want to make sure that you use plenty of wood glue, especially when you're laminating pieces together. Got the inside of the port completely painted, so now when we line this up, it's just going to be nice and dark in there. Now, a little trick that you can use to line up your port is you take some pieces that you've cut to the width of the port. In this case, this is an inch and a quarter, and I'm going to set these in here and use them as guides while I'm nailing this in place. Having those strips also comes in handy so that you can draw the edge of the port location, that way you know exactly where to put your screw or your nail. The port's secured in the enclosure, now I can add the front pieces. And don't forget that in every corner I'm going to add one of these 45 degree pieces, this helps to strengthen the edges of the box. So check it out, now this is really starting to look quite like an enclosure. Let's get the top attached. We are in the home stretch now, finishing this box now that the top is on. I did mention earlier that I wanted to do some roundovers to the outside once final assembly was done, and we are at that stage now, so let's get that done. Now that we've added our roundovers here, we're basically ready for paint. I do need to prep with applying some masking tape over the port and the subwoofer hole like we talked about. But really quick, I do want to show you a cool little test that you can do to make sure that you don't have any major air leaks. Put a piece of paper towel here and you can see that just by barely touching the subwoofer, it impacts and the air will move that. So that tells me that we have a nice good seal inside this enclosure. We are all prepped and ready to go. So to coat this enclosure, I'm going to be using this stuff. This is called Duratex. It's a roll on speaker enclosure coating. It's the same stuff that I used on the previous enclosure. We just use this little roller here and roll it on just like any other paint. And with that, we have a completely coated box. I really like the way that this coating looks. I like how these roundovers look on the corners too. Looking good. Now we need to address trying to minimize the vibration of this enclosure against the cabinet. I flipped the enclosure over because on the bottom of it, I want to attach these feet. The reason for the feet is to properly isolate the enclosure from the rest of the cabinet. I made sure when I designed the enclosure, I left about a half inch from each of the sides and a half inch from the top and the bottom. And that gave me room to add these and to make sure that the enclosure isn't touching anything. By having these be the only part that's really touching the cabinet, it's going to to limit the amount of vibration that goes into the cabinet and potentially vibrates everything. So I've carefully marked out some locations measuring from the edges here. I'm just going to use these screws and attach them. A quick little test fit here and this looks good. Obviously we still need to mount the subwoofer and test this out but I do think that for now I'm just going to leave it like this but I do have the option where I could get another one of these drawer fronts that are this size and I'm thinking about using some magnets to maybe attach it on there and I would do a cutout in the drawer drawer and maybe use some white grill cloth. That's something that I don't have right now. Let me know what you guys think about that because then I could really make it blend in and look like it's part of these cabinets. Now we need to mount the subwoofer in the enclosure, which means we need to wire it, but I did make a mistake. I totally didn't realize that I don't have any speaker wire terminals right now for that subwoofer box, so I've got some on order. But in the meantime, we're just going to drill a small hole that's about the size of this wire, and I'll just use some of this butyl rubber in order to seal around it for the time being. But that does allow us to talk about what we're going to be using to power this subwoofer. This is just an old plate amplifier out of an old subwoofer box. So this plate amplifier is for a home audio system, which means that we can just plug it on in and then we just need the RCA signal input going in here, which we will get the signal for out of our source unit. Eventually, I would like to switch away from using this plate amplifier and instead have a large power supply that I could use to power a car audio amplifier. But if you've ever priced them out, you probably know that really powerful power supplies that can do like 30 or 40 amps, those can be pretty pricey. So maybe something for the future, but right now I'm using this home audio amp. So here it is, my friends. I've got it installed. Probably the easiest install I've ever done. Just had to slide it on in there. Now, I definitely like the way this looks, but the proof is in the pudding. You know we got to do a sound test. I'm going to start with measuring on the RTA again here, so be ready for some static noise. And there's some proof for you right there. Definitely a ton more low-end bass. So I want to play some music so you guys can really hear the impact of the sub. Now, on the head unit, I can turn the subwoofer on and off. So what I'm going to do is when the subwoofer is on, I'm going to be pointing upwards and when I turn it off, I'm going to point downwards. Let's do this.
Now, as far as vibration goes, there's definitely stuff in the shop that's rattling. I've noticed that it seems to be more kind of my router bits more than anything. I'm actually really surprised because in these drawers, this is where I keep all of my screws and my different bolts and fasteners. And surprisingly enough, these don't really seem to rattle. Friends, I am really happy with this upgrade to the shop sound system. I'm definitely looking forward to rocking out while I'm building stuff and listening to some true bass. I wanna hear from you guys though. Do you think that adding a shop subwoofer is needed or is it good enough to just have the normal smaller speakers in more of a boombox style configuration? Next time you're doing a car audio install and need help selecting that gear, don't forget to check out show sponsor Crutchfield. You can learn more at the link here on screen or down in the video description. A big thanks to them along with Mike, Ron, Ali, Jerry, Mark, Marcos William and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all these guys for making these videos possible. And always, my friends, thank you guys for watching.